So, uh, folks, welcome back to Rugby Ascended. This is Chris in Central Pennsylvania. My guest today is Adrian Carlson from South Africa, who plays for Rugby Atlanta, now the Rattlers. Adrian, it's been quite uh, an exciting start here. I understand that you had some challenges getting into the U.S. Uh, over the pandemic restrictions and constraints, and you weren't able to join the team at the start of the season. So how did that go for you? Was that a big challenge to get just to get in the U.S.? <clears throat> Yeah, it was. It was. It was really a challenge. It was. It was really tough. Um, things didn't work out well. Um, we had. It was really tough back in South Africa, especially just to get an appointment at the embassy. But um, and it was also tough. Um, I mean, you have to train. You have to train on your own. Um, they gave us um, our attacking plays, um, calls and stuff that we had to learn back at home so when we get here it's easier so it was tough it was it was it was really tough but um I just to be honest with you my family or my fiance her family um they they just like believed in me also just told me to to believe that everything is going to work out um because <laughs> there was a time when it also felt like um things is not working out and I mean the season already started and I was still back in South Africa so it was really it was really tough um getting here um to to the USA now I'm sure it was a big challenge now you and Johan whom I just spoke to a short while ago Johan are both from Western Province uh, not too far apart he's from Parle you're from Somerset West uh one of the most beautiful geographic spots on the planet beautiful Mediterranean climate uh, quite lovely there. You've got the Strand, you've got Gordon's Bay, Somerset West, stunning mountains all around you, nearby vineyards in Stellenbosch and Franschhoek, uh, gorgeous beaches, but but close by, very close to that, you've also got some of the most um, disadvantaged and impoverished areas in the country in Caixeta and in Mitchell's Plain there in the, in the um, Cape Flats. Uh, that must be a very strange experience growing up in that area with seeing such a, a diverse experience that people who live there are going through uh, different living conditions. Uh, did Were you aware of that as a kid growing up? It was it something that affected you. Uh, were you one of those poor kids or did you, were you one of those rich kids or somewhere in between or where did you find yourself? So I'm actually like I tell people I'm from Somerset West, but I'm actually from Salori Spas. So it's like a small village outside Strand, Gardens Bay and Somerset West. Um, and it's really tough, um, like, especially in our generation growing up. Um, I mean, there's a lot of, I mean, back then it was different, but I mean, there's a lot of stuff that, um, especially for our young people, I mean, drugs, um, there's a lot of stuff that, um, that can influence your, your, our lives. And it's really tough. Um, I have a lot of friends, um, and it's also really good rugby players but didn't always get the, the opportunity that I got. Um, so it, it was really tough growing up um, to always make the right decision, um, what you wanted in life. Um, so it was really tough, um, like growing up, to be honest. No, I can imagine it's uh, quite a challenge. All those distractions, things pulling you one way or the other, and the wrong decision leads you down the wrong way in life. But it looks like uh, whatever whatever it was, whether it was your internal fortitude, it was family, it was faith, whatever it was that helped you, uh, or just your innate nature, it seems like you made the right decisions and you made on the right paths. Congratulations on that. It's not always easy. Thank you so much. And like I said, like my fiance, um, our family, my family, they really played a big role in um, where I am today. Um, it wasn't always easy um, for me um, where I am today, and I'm really grateful and think and thankful for all their support um for always backing backing me um for always believing in me um even sometimes there's days that I don't believe in myself that I doubt myself but they were the people that that stood behind me and always believed in me so a, lo a lot of credit must also go to them like I really have a, a good support system and my fiance she really goes out of her way um to be there for me and to make things easier, especially when the when I don't have a uh, an easy day or things don't go my way, she's always the one I can talk to. And especially now, it's really tough. She's back in South Africa, but and especially with the time difference and everything, but we still make it work. And yeah, I'm um, forever thankful um, for all their support back home. 
Now, now is she, you mentioned your fiance several times here. Congratulations on, on having a fiance. That's awesome, Audrey. I'm, I'm happy to hear that. Now, you, you talk. You mentioned you, you talk quite a bit. Uh, is she a first language Afrikaans speaker or an Anglophone speaker? What's her first language? So she's she's actually her first language is English. Ah, okay. Um, and her second language is um, Afrikaans. Um, but yeah, she's strictly English. <laughs> but she understands Afrikaans also. <laughs> No, I get that. Well, I, I ask because it makes a difference because of the, the way people speak. You, you can have some misunderstanding sometimes with your partner. Yeah. <laughs> now, listen, you, you came to Rugby Atlanta. You're not exactly an inexperienced guy. You've got a lot of uh, appearances under your belt. You played with uh, Western Province. You can see me wearing the hoops here today. I'm a province fan. Yeah, yeah. Through. I've been a province <laughs> fan through and through for over 30 years. So, And as I told Johan, I said, why not? They won more Curry Cups than anybody else, right? Uh, but uh, so you were with them in the under 19s. And I, if I'm not mistaken, you guys beat the Bulls in, in the final in Cape Town. Uh, that must have been impressive. It was a close game to 33 uh, 26. You later played with Bolin. You got 54 appearances with the Cavaliers. And you also played with the Cheetahs. But that was in the Pro 14, wasn't it? Um, no, no. I played Curry Cup for them. Okay. Um, yeah, I haven't played Pro 14 yet. Um, yeah, back in under 19 for Western Province, that's actually the first time when I met Moma, Johan Momsen. Um, we played together under 19, and it was really, uh, it was an amazing year. Um, yeah, th- we won that year, so it was quite special for us. Um, we actually the last under 19 group that won that trophy. Um, and yeah, after that, I went to Poland. I was there like for three years. I was privileged. privileged enough to get 50 caps and I actually learned a lot and from there on I went to the Cheetahs I got, got an opportunity and I was there for two years and um, I learned a lot um, I didn't play that much rugby to be honest um, but I had to leave my family behind um, because um, the Cheetahs is based in Bloemfontein and it was really also a challenge for me not just on the field but off the field I mean um, that's the first time when I like left home, um, left my parents, my girlfriend behind. And and I learned a lot, um, to be honest with you, not um, just on the rugby field, um, but also I, I got to, um, to know myself better. Um, I had to do things on my own. And I think it made me a better person at the end of the day. And yeah, I'm grateful that for that opportunity also. Now, of course, in rugby in South Africa, some folks just come from long established rugby families and long lines. Uh, you know, Skulk Berger, of course, his father was also a Springbok. Uh, what about yourself? Are you a first generation rugby uh, player or, or is, there, is there a history of rugby in your family? So when I talk to my uncles, I mean, they're now 50, 60 years old. And then if I, if I hear these stories, um, they, everyone played rugby back then. My father also played rugby. But rugby was never like there they wasn't someone in our family that really made it like to the top level. And I'm really privileged um, to made it or not want to say I made it, but I mean to play on this level at the highest level and to, to, um, to be a professional in the sport. Um, but like, like I said, my family, um, they always support me, um, standing behind me, backing me, always believing in me. And it makes it so much easier um, to perform, um, knowing that there's people that that has all the um, confidence and that's always backing you. Um, Even times when you feel like um, you feel down or things not going your way, but you know there's there's people that's always backing you and that's standing behind you. But um, my father played rugby, but not at the highest level. Uh, My father's brother... He also played rugby. Um, he was actually the, the the more the one that's more into sport. Uh, you you also did athletics, um, but yeah, like I said, my uncles, my grandfather, um, they all played rugby. But I, I, I that was bef- way before my time. So yeah, like I said, <laughs> it's just stories I heard. That's just uh, ancient history, I guess, is what you're trying to say. <laughs> Without, yeah. with, shh, hopefully, your hopefully your father and your family won't watch this interview. <laughs> no, just kidding. No, but uh, not not to put you on the spot, but this is um, I think interesting thing is if people if they may not know about South Africa and the Western Cape, 
Uh, you know, it, if, wherever you are in the world, it's interesting to talk to people because a lot of times people <clears> don't see the things right around them that tourists go and see or that tourists know about. Um, I could pick someone in New York City and mention something like, really, that's here in, in Manhattan or someone in Atlanta. Like, that's in Atlanta. Like there's a Gone with the Wind Museum in Marietta. People like, really? I didn't know that. So yeah. let me not to put you on the spot, but South Africa has penguins. I, I don't think people realize this. I mean, it's not just in Antarctica that you find penguins. You find them in South Africa. And because of the annoying sounds they make, they're known as jackass penguins. And they kind of cluster over by Simonstown. So my question to you, Adrian, is have you ever gone over and checked out the penguins? Have you ever seen them? I actually want to tell you a story. So um, a few years ago, yeah, I think it was, say, four years ago, four or five years ago. So my my fiance now, um, my girlfriend, she loves penguins. And on her birthday, um, I took her to Simonstown um, to go check out the penguins because they're just all over the beach they're in Simonstown. Um, it's just past Musenberg, um, then Fisuk. Um, so yeah, I went to go check out the penguins. Um, uh, we went for the day. So yeah, there's a lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> they sure are. And they're noisy. They're very annoying. That's why they're called jackass penguins. It's kind of funny. Well, I just, uh, so I'm glad that you did, because as I said, a lot of times people live in a place their whole lives and they don't know about things that tourists just come to see. And obviously tourists go there to see the penguins, but they are interesting. So I'm glad that you took your girlfriend slash fiance over there. I'm sure she, uh, she appreciated that. So listen, uh, just a, I don't know, maybe a comment kind of question and just to, I'll phrase it as a comment and turn it to a question to see where we're going. Uh, when you first started playing with the side there, you have a lot of confidence by the try line when you look and it looks like you've got an opening there. I think a few people's fans hearts stop sometimes when you come out of the, out of the try area and there's, there's a whole defense in front of you there. You seem to have a lot of confidence there. Are you seeing things and openings that maybe the fans don't see? Cause you're making these split second decisions and it's paid off. Well, you've had some incredible runs carrying the ball, but, <laughs> but sometimes like, Oh no, he's not going to go. Is he, why does he just kick? Um, do you just, are you seeing things that folks don't see? So, so what I do is, you know, what I do is I think you can, you can ask every rugby player is, um, Everything happens so fast. Um, what I try to do is like, I always try to be decisive. So if I decide I'm, I'm going to kick, then I'm going to kick. If, I'm if I decide I'm going to run, I'm going to run if the space is there. And sometimes what happened is we, um, you overthink too much. Am I, must I run? Must I kick? And then that's when you actually make mistakes because you're so in, you're in two minds, you, you're indecisive. So what I do is I, I just try to always back myself. If I, if I make the decision, if I see it's on, if the space is there or, or the, the core come from outside of this space, um, then I'll make my decision. And like I said, I, I don't try to, to overthink the situation. Um, I just try to be decisive. Um, so if the space is there, I'm going to take the space. If it's not there, if the kicking option is on, I'm going to kick there. But I just try not to overthink and um, to put myself in two minds. Must I kick? Must I run? That's when you actually um, mess things up because you don't know. You have too many things in your mind. Um, like you try too many things um, or what to do. So I, what I just try to do is I just try to be decisive, to make a decision. And yeah, just back that decision. Well, I, I've got to say this about all this uh, for you, Adriana, is that... Um, your kicking game, you've had to have adjusted. I mean, you're playing on all these artificial <laughs> turf and, and the ball doesn't bounce the same way. It appears as if you found the formula. You've, your chip and chase seems to be, uh, have, you, have you figured out how to play on turf uh, or, or, or did you already know how to do that? And, and, it, and is it really make a difference in your kicking game when you're trying to move the ball up the pitch? Um, it was an adjustment, to be honest. Um, back in South Africa, we don't really have um, we we play on grass. We don't play on turf. Um, so it was it was an adjustment. But when I got here, um, I spoke to the coaches. Um, Coach Steve told me, um, I must just remember like the ball rolls more here on the turf. Um, so I just um, tweaked that a little bit. And I mean, during trainings in the week when we have kicking then um, that actually helps um, to prepare for the game. And um, yeah, I think I'm, I'm managing it now really well, how to kick on the turf. And I think it's paying off, to be honest. 
Well, I, I would have to agree with you, Adran. It's uh, especially this weekend. Um, you, 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 the way you placed the ball, where you kicked it, it seems like you've kind of figured out how turf works for you and against you in the kicking game. You had some pretty impressive kicks out there. But I do want to ask a question. You mentioned Coach Steve, Steve Brett, I believe you're talking about from New Zealand. Uh, I understand that uh, you kind of see him as a mentor, but he's he's a Kiwi. I mean, that's that's sacrilege. How can a South African look to a Kiwi for inspiration? I mean, that's just wrong. I've got to tell you that. <laughs> Yeah, like um, Coach Steve, um, he was one of, he's a really good good rugby player. He was one of the guys I also looked up to, um, loved to watch um, the way how he played the game. And I mean, it's really, it's for me, I'm really privileged to work with him, to learn from him. Um, he's a rugby, rugby brain, the way he sees things and how he goes about his things. And just, it's just really, it's, He's really good. Um, and yeah, back in South Africa, um, <laughs> we, um, like not everyone, or there's a lot of, especially in the Western Cape, there's a lot of Oblique supporters, New Zealand supporters, and Crusader supporters. <laughs> and he played, he played for the Crusaders. He started there. Um, but yeah, um, for me, it's really, I'm really honored and privileged to work with him. Um, he's really good at what he's doing, um, how he goes about things and how he just, um, how we see the game. And yeah, I think we as a team or yeah, as players must just, we must just execute like the plans he has for us um, on attack. It's really, it's it's mind blowing to be honest. Um, and I'm really privileged to work with him. Um, I'm grateful to be here, um, to work with him. And I, like I said, I mean, he was a guy that I looked up to and now I get to work work with him. So for me, it's something really big. And um, like I said, I'm really privileged to work with him. Now, that's that's awesome. I was curious about that relationship because, yes, because he's a well-known rugby player, even though he's a Kiwi. We'll have to, have to give him <laughs> that. Let's, let's, listen, Adrian, I have over 100 rugby jerseys in my collection. I have over 30 Springbok jerseys of one sort or another. I have zero all-black jerseys. <laughs> <laughs> and they just had a big sale. I could have gotten one. And guess what? I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> But, you were a little supporter. <laughs> no, I'm a, I'm a Springbok supporter, so I just can't I can't bring myself to support the All Blacks. <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's just yeah. No, they, they're great. They're amazing. But um, I, I have to delete that part of the interview out, saying they were great and amazing. We can't let people know I said that. But uh, <laughs> not not an All Blacks player. But uh, so just one uh, quick question here before we wrap up. Um, so was this your first time in the states when you came over to play for the Rattlers <laughs> and? Um, What's it like? It's, I mean, this is not South Africa. It's very different in so many ways. And of course, Atlanta is not America. It's just one little place in America. But yeah. what's your experience been like so far? So this is actually my first time overseas. So for me, this is quite special. So um, to be uh, in Atlanta, um, yeah, it's very different, to be honest. Um, when I got there the first time with it, first week, it was really tough, um, especially um like I said, like with the time difference and stuff, like I, um, me and my fiance, like the communication was a bit off because when I go to sleep, when I go to bed, she wakes up. When she wakes up, I go to bed. So that was really difficult, um, uh, like our communication. But Atlanta, it's a, it's a really, it's a nice place. Um, the people is nice. To be honest with you, I really, I'm enjoying my time so a year so far. And um, the setup here and the team we have here, the culture, um, like it's off to Coach Scott um, for what he's trying to do here. I think it's really working and it's paying off. And we're not just like a, a rugby team and like teammates, like um, we like more like family, like even off the field. Like if I have to go somewhere, like there's always guys willing to help me or to take me somewhere or it's not just, okay, on the field with teammates and then off the field we don't greet each other off the field we'll still hang out um do stuff together so yeah to be honest i'm enjoying my time here so far um and yeah atlanta is a really nice place and i'm looking forward to to see different places here in america
Well, I hope you get a chance to see a lot of the country. It's uh, look, I'm very biased, obviously, as an American, but this is a pretty amazing place. But then so is South Africa. But there's so much to see and so much to do from so many standpoints all around you. So ne- never, never hesitate to use Google. It's your friend if you want to find something to do. It'll 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 t- point out some nice places to visit, uh, even right around you there in Marietta. It's quite lovely. So, Audrey Carlson, it's a pleasure to, to have a conversation with you today. You've got uh, NOLA this weekend. Uh, at the gold mine. And then you've got Rooney the following week. And I intend to go up to that game. Uh, you guys are not getting a break here. Five consecutive wins. You think you'd, you'd get an easy team to play, but apparently there aren't any easy teams to play. <laughs> so good luck this weekend. And, uh, and uh, you, your game is, is, is pretty exciting to watch. Uh, I'm talking about your, spe- your personal game. It's fun to watch you. And I, and I hope that you enjoy the rest of the season, and have great success there in Atlanta. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And it was nice talking to you. That was a pleasure. Thanks a lot. Always. Bye-bye, donkey. (laughs) Thank you so much. Have a nice day. All right. Cheers.